Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jody with Board Game Perspective. So today we're taking a look at this game, Cottage Garden, designed by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Stronghold Games, and it plays one to four players. So as the name suggests, you're, you are going to be building your own garden. You'll have these gardens right here that you're going to be trying to fill in from end to end with different plants, flower pots, even some friendly cats. So let's see how this game is played. So to set up the game, each player is going to grab one of these little score tracks here and two flower beds, making sure that one is darker and the other is lighter, and that's just simply by flipping one over. And then each player will grab three cubes of each color and put them in these starting places here, and also grabbing two cats from the supply. And then you'll place a random flower bed on the light side in the general supply. Then you have the game board in the middle here that is called the nursery and you're going to put a bunch of flower tiles out at random in each little square here. Then you have the gardener which is the dice and you are going to put that on which player count you might have. So this is going to, we're going to set up for a three player game and you're going to put the face value one die right on the three player as well. And then on the other side shows for, uh, for four players. And then you have the wheelbarrow that signifies the start of the uh, flower tiles path and you're just going to make a path of all of the leftover tiles and then you have a general supply of cat tokens, uh, flower pots, and beehives and yep and then you should be ready to go. So players are just going to be taking turns back and forth and there are a set number of turns before the final round starts depending on the player count. So for example if you're playing with three players each player will have 26 turns before the final round starts. So each turn consists of four phases. You have the re refilling phase, the planting phase, the scoring phase, and the gardener phase. So you're going to be moving the gardener along on these different rows and columns. Um, and in a one to three player game, you're just going to do what I showed there. But in a four player game, which is the other side of the board, there's a spot where you're going to have a diagonal path as well. So let's go through um, the different phases on your turn. So first is the refilling phase. So what's going to happen here is at the beginning of your turn, if three or four of the spaces in the, uh, the row where the gardener is at is empty, then you must refill it. So let's say that we only had one flower tile here. So at the beginning of my turn, I would refill it, starting with uh, close to the gardener here, like this. And then I would move the wheelbarrow down to the beginning of the path. Another option is if there are only one or two spaces empty, you can spend one of your, your cat tokens and return it to the supply, and then you can refill those extra spaces. So the second phase on your turn is the planting phase, and you must take one of the following actions. So you have to either take a flower tile out here or a flower pot. So first, if I, if I wanted to take a flower tile, I would choose one from the row where the gardener is at. So let's just say I'll take this one. And then you're going to immediately place it on one of your flower beds. So I will place it, let's say, right there. Or instead of doing that, what you could have done is taken a flower pot from the supply and immediately place it on one of your flower beds as well. In addition to taking one of those two actions, you can also place one of your cats in your reserve on an empty spot on your turn. Let's go over a few of the planting rules whenever you're putting a flower tile onto your flower bed. So you can place it anywhere on your flower bed. Uh, you can even cover these printed garden cloche and the flower pot symbols that are printed onto the flower bed. You can cover them if, if you need to. Um, generally, generally you want to try to not cover them. Um, obviously you cannot go outside of the flower bed boundaries. Guys, stay inside. 
You can flip and rotate your tile if you want to try to orient different ways that you can put the tile on there. Now, if you have a flower pot token and a cat token out there, you can't place this over, over those. It's got to be only the uh, pre-printed ones on the flower bed. So after you've done the planting phase, then you move on to the scoring phase. And what happens here is once one of your flower beds is completely filled, then you're going to score it. So let's score this one here. So you're going to be scoring uh, flower pots. These are going to be the orange cubes and the garden cloches are going to be the blue cubes. So you're going to count how many visible of each you have. So obviously anything that's covered by a flower uh, tile will, now count, will not count. And also cat tokens don't count toward those points as well. So we got one, two, three, four, five visible uh, flower pots. So I, I can grab one of my orange cubes and move it up five spots. Now, if I had multiple uh, cubes out there, you can choose which cube to move or which orange cube to move. You just can't split it up between cubes. It has to be one, one that moves the whole movement. Um, and then you're going to do the garden cloches. So I, I'm seeing one, two out there. So I'm going to grab a blue cube and move up two spaces. So let's take a look at some of the special rules for this planting table. So if you ever move an orange or blue cube across this red line here with mice, so let's say I had done that. Then you will take a cat, front, cat token from the general supply. If you ever move your last uh, cube of a color, so let's say or all three of my orange cubes have been moved out, then as soon as you do that, you are going to uh, take a flower pot token from the supply and immediately place it out onto one of your flower beds. If you have more than two cats at the end of your turn in your reserve, then you have to place uh, one of the cats out there until you have exactly two cats left in your reserve. So let's say I'm just gonna, I got three, so I need to place out one, so I'll, I'll place out one out here. And then uh, also, if you have all three of your cubes that have made the end here um, of one color, then whenever you go to score flower bed, you can't move these up anymore. They're, this is the final destination. Now the first time a player moves into the target space, they will get a bonus tile of two beehives. This is basically just going to be two points at the end of the game. If another player happens to reach um, uh, the target space as well, then they will receive the bonus tile with one beehive. Now, a single player cannot get both of these. They can only receive one. After you finish scoring your completed flower bed, then you're going to remove all of the stuff and you're going to put the return the flower tiles back to the garden path at the very end of the garden path where the wheelbarrow is not. And then you're going to return all the cat tokens to the supply, the flower pot token to the supply. And then you're going to flip the flower bed over and put this in the general supply. And then you're going to take <clears throat> the one from the general supply and place it into your play area. After you've completed the scoring phase, you then do the gardener phase where you are simply going to move the garner die one space in the direction of the arrows. Once you get to this side of the board over here, there are some turning spaces. So this is where you're going to be flipping the die over to the next uh, number. Whenever you get to six, that's going to trigger the, trigger the final round. So uh, let's say this is our first time around and this is a three player game. So for a three player, I turn it over at the turning spot right here. So when I move here, I'm going to turn it to two, and that's going to be the second round. For one to two players, you're going to, you're going to switch it over here. Once you've hit the final round, then each player has to get rid of any flower beds that only contain fewer than three flower tiles. So zero, one, or two flower tiles out. So this flower bed only has one flower tile, so they will have to get rid of this. And then, so every player is going to do that, and then you're going to keep uh, playing until no one has flower beds left in front of them. Also in this final round, before each turn, you're going to lose two points by either moving one orange cube back two spaces, so one, two, or one blue cube back one space on the scoring track. After you completed a flower bed, you're, you're going to, like I said earlier, remove it from the game, and you're not going to receive any new flower beds. Once you have no flower beds left at the start of your turn, you will not lose any more points, but instead you will only perform the gardener phase. 
So the game is going to end once all the flower beds have been removed from the game, and then you're going to tally up your points, and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. So to tie up your points, you're just going to simply add up all of the spots where your cubes are. So this is on one, so that'd be one point. This is on four, so that'd be four points. So you're going to add up all of those. And then this target space is 20 points, so this cube would get 20 points. If there were any cubes remaining in the starting area, no points are awarded for those. And no points are also rewarded for these cat tokens that are left over. And lastly, you would get a point or two for the beehive uh, tile that you might have. So this one has two beehives, so I would get two points for this. Also want to point out at the end of the rule book there are some solo rules and also some rules for playing cottage garden with small children. And in the back there's also a nice little list of all the different flower tiles are, that are in the game. Alrighty, so that is cottage garden. So go ahead and leave some comments down below if you have any questions or any thoughts about the game. And if you want to help us out, go ahead and click that subscribe button and like this video. And until next time guys, thanks for watching.